to the crucial moments. This teaching isn't come to isn't it inspire it doesn't come to inspire fear in you. This teaching hasn't come to inspire fear in you. And it's a truth. It's not a reality. It's a truth that the entire world is ignorant of. Je ne sais pas si Dieu a passé par quelqu'un à enseigner ça. I don't know if God has used work through someone in time past to bring forth this teaching. I don't know. Mais c'est dans la Bible. But it's in the Bible, however. Je ne sais pas comment tu me vois. I don't know how you see me. Je ne sais pas comment tu me considères. I don't know how you consider me. C'est pas important. That's not my po- that's that's not my issue. That's not important to me. Mais ce qui va sortir. But what's going to come out? C'est ce que la parole de Dieu. Is the word of God. C'est la vérité. It's the truth. Le monde entier. Si nous voyons les enfants de Dieu partout dans le monde entier, c'est des millions, des milliards. The entire world, if you were to take count of the children of God there in the entire world, it's millions upon thousands upon millions. Mais Uncountable, innumerable. Si vous posez la question, qui sont dans le monde entier, dans toutes les églises là, But qui appartient à Dieu, qui sont les enfants de Dieu, c'est ça le problème. But if you were to ask the question in all those churches worldwide, how many, who are those that belong to God? That's the problem. Oh, there's m- numerous pro- oh, introductions on YouTube. But if God wills today, we'll, enter, we'll go through three introductions. But today, we begin with the unforgivable, unforgivable, unpardonable sin. Quel péché as-tu commis au point où mon, même si Moïse et Samuel intercèdent pour toi, Dieu ne le sera pas. Et si Dieu ne le sera pas, où sera ta fin? What sin have you committed at the point two that if Moses and Samuel were to intercede before God, their prayers, their intercession would avail to nothing before before God? What have you done? What sin have you committed and there remains no forgiveness, no pardon for you? You see some people, they speak in tongues. You see some people, they're in good health. You see some people, they're in the pulpit, they're preaching the word of God. But if you ask the question, if you were to examine perfectly well, you see they committed the unpardonable sin. They committed the unforgivable sin. How do you recognize? How do you determine those people? How do you, how, how, how do you recognize those people? My beloved. How do you know if you sin against the Holy Spirit? If someone were to tell you, if the words were to be addressed to you, that you sinned against the Holy Spirit, beloved, 
Your life would be turned how? How would you like that? You just look at the day. How would it end for you? If you were to be given a beautiful young virgin girl today, and they were told you're going to marry this girl today, oh, and to go take things further, you're going to go on the marriage bed today with her, and you're, you're happy with that. But before you go on the marriage bed with her, they tell you one thing, sir, you've sinned against the Holy Spirit. You can't touch her. She can, she can be beautiful and attractive. She can be no matter how beautiful, but your strength would abandon you in that moment. That's why I want you to lend me your ears. Here is where you can be given all the riches in the entire world. And it's addressed to you that you sinned against the Holy Spirit. Beloved, with all the riches that you've just acquired, your life, how would it be? How would your life be? You, you can go buy the most luxurious cars, the most luxurious yachts that you want, but they just tell you you've sinned against the Holy Spirit. How would your life be? When you learn that you've sinned against the Holy Spirit, how would your life be? Beloved, I haven't come here to condemn you. But I'm just here to tell you, announce to you what's waiting for you after your deceased. Oh, you can speak in tongues. Yes, you can give gifts. Yes, you can take care of the orphans. Yes, you can. But what will to you if you sin against the Holy Spirit? You'll be miserable. You'll be poor. Miserable above miserable. My beloved, how would you know if you sinned against the Holy Spirit? How? How? We'll see. You see the behavior patterns of those people who've sinned against the Holy Spirit. And who is the Holy Spirit? God says, if you sin against me, whosoever sin against me, it's forgivable. Jesus says, if you sin against me, it's forgivable. And it's again Jesus who pronounces the words, whoever sins against the Holy Spirit, there remains no forgiveness, no pardon. Whoa. Woe to the person who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit. Even if it would be it would be better for you if you were never born. If you were never created, it would have been better for you. Malheur scandal. Woe to the scandal. Woe to the offender. Oh, it is necessary. Offenses must come. But woe to the person by whom it comes to. Yes, you may at times, you may sin against the Lord, sin against God. But woe to that person, woe to that person who will sin against the Holy Spirit. It would have been better for him if he had never been born. Woe to you. We'll see the, the facts. We'll see. And you'll see. If someone has sinned against the Holy Spirit and you innocent and in your prayer you begin to intercede for that person you also, you fall under the same condemnation really it's a truth 
quelqu'un qui a péché contre le Saint-Esprit, tu ne sais rien. You, you're ignorant of the tu ne sais pas comment il a fait. You don't know how he at that point. Et puis il vient auprès de toi. And he comes you. Et il te dit, mon frère, c'est comme ma vie, ça ne va pas. It's like my life, the things are c'est comme down. il n'y a plus la paix en moi. It's like there's no longer peace inside of me. moi Please. Sustain me, uphold me. And you begin to utter ba ba ba. To sustain him. To pray with him. The same condemnation looms over your head. What is he talking about? I'm telling you a truth. Je suis pas là pour une réalité. I'm not here for a reality. Je suis là pour une vérité. I'm here for a truth. Une vérité pure. A pure truth. Quand tu vas commencer à attendre, when you begin, sorti, when you begin to, tu vas te poser la question. When you begin to hear si the word, if ever I've sinned against the Holy Spirit, ou bien quelqu'un n'a pas péché contre le Saint Esprit, j'ai péché avec lui. Or maybe someone had. I have been sinned against the Holy Spirit, but somebody else has, si and I've been succeeded for that person. If, a le if someone has sinned against the Holy Spirit, et, et dans ta maison, and you welcome him into your house, you receive him into your house, à manger, vous and you feed him, and you eat him, you also are considered among the number of those who blaspheme against the Holy Spirit. Just mere salutation, simple salutation, you just salute the person. He's also contracted to you, he's con- he contracted a disease. What's he talking about? You'll see. You'll see. You'll see, and you see that it's an unavoidable truth what I'm talking about. Beloved, see a pastor, a pastor, a pastor, the entire assembly perishes in hell. Really? Yes, it's the truth. I know void of and I don't know what pastor will have the courage to tell you what I'm telling you. Beloved, it's a truth. 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5, verse 16. I have the word of God in the name of Jesus. If someone drinks his friend, commettre un péché qui ne mène point à la mort. Il prie et Dieu donnera la vie à ce frère. Il la donnera à ceux qui commettent un péché qui ne mène point à la mort. Alléluia. Il y a un péché qui mène à la mort. Ce n'est pas, ce n'est pas pour ce péché-là que je dis de prier. Bien aimé, la Bible nous dit quelque chose. Beloved, the Bible is telling us something here. La Bible dit, hein? the Bible says it. Si nos frères et nos sœurs, if our brothers and our sisters, nos parents, our parents, ils ont combien de péchés? They have how many sins? Le péché là ne met pas la mort. That sin does not lead to death. On peut prier pour ce frère. You can pray for that brother. And God shall forgive that brother sincerely. But he tells us. There is a sin that leads to death, that leads to hell, that leads to everlasting death. I'm not, ta- I'm not saying that he should pray for that person. I'm not saying that he should intercede for that person. No. How? Amen. How are we to distinguish? 
between the person who's committed a sin not leading to death and you can pray for that person and God shall restore that person and between the person who's committed a sin leading to death how are we to know how are we to distinguish ah, the sin that that person just committed it's a sin that leads to death whatsoever the parent be whosoever the brother be whosoever the sister be ah, the sin that he just committed it leads to death how are we to distinguish to abstain from certain prayers oh it's pitiful yes it's pitiful there are people that are already dead they're standing on their feet but dead and they believe that they have life their carcasses dead carcasses but alive how do you know it's like Nebuchadnezzar that had a dream he said the dream I had it but it, 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 I forgotten it but you have to remember you have to tell me the dream tell me the dream oh and bring me the explanation if not all of you people are on the point of death you risk your life the big magicians those great magicians of those times they tell you you're going to die in five minutes they convocated all the wise men of the kingdom they came Nebuchadnezzar addresses the audience and he says, I don't want to hear anything, I don't want to understand anything. All I know is that I had a dream, but the thing is gone from me. I need the dream and I need the explanation. Look. Same thing here. How do you know? Someone who sins. And that sin is not a sin leading against the Holy Spirit. And you can pray for him. How do you know against all oh, to distinguish between the person who's committed a sin against the Holy Spirit? And we say, no, we can't pray for that person. How do you know? Look, a pastor who's in his office. You bring someone who's on a point of death. Pastor, please help. I'm on the point of death. And he sees that the person is on the brinks of death. Or he sees his brother that once is on the brink of death. A woman who sees a wife who sees her husband who is on the point of death. A parent that sees her child or his children about to die. Can you possibly think of that question before you pray? He's going to die. And Jesus is giving you the power. He sees Satan like a lightning. And he's giving you the power to destroy all. Heal. Revive. Resuscitate the dead. Resurrect the dead. And you have that power alive in you. But with that power, know how to use it. If you don't know how to use it, you yourself, you will destroy yourself. Thinking that you're doing good. A brother is brought to me and he's on the point of death. But how do I possibly know to ask him the question, my brother, have you committed a sin that's against the Holy Spirit? How do I know? And maybe at that moment, he's struck him by God. It's God himself struck him. How do you know? And you're the person who's going to pray for him. The death that's upon him, he shared it with you. My beloved, how can you know? That's the difference between the children for the children by today. No, not for brutish children. No. 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 
No, not for the children of the devil who are taken for the children of God who are sneaky. After your decease, you will know that everything I've spoken here today is a truth. You who blasphemed against the Holy Spirit because you prayed for a brother who is equally blasphemed against the Holy Spirit. To see the difference, to know, you have to know. It's important what Jesus says. He addressed the word John chapter 4. John chapter 4. John chapter 4. Je lis la parole de Dieu au nom puissant de Jésus. Jean 4. Verset 20 à 24. Je lis la parole de Dieu au nom puissant de Jésus. Nos pères ont adoré sur cette montagne. Et vous dites, vous, que le lieu où il faut adorer est à Jérusalem. Car, lui dit Jésus, crois-moi, leur bien, où ce ne sera ni sur cette montagne, ni à Jérusalem que vous adorez le Père. Mais il n'a pas vous dit, Dieu ne vous a pas dit, l'homme qu'on va adorer le Père. Il n'a pas dit, ce n'est pas écrit, si ce n'est pas une révélation. Alléluia. Amen. You see here, Jesus, a woman says to Jesus, here a month upon this mountain, our fathers have worshipped God. And Jesus, but Jesus didn't tell her, he didn't locate her, he didn't redirect her, reorient her to another place where they're supposed to worship God. You didn't see that written in scripture. Jesus just says, believe me. Believe me. Because these words are a truth. Unavoidable. An unperishable truth. Amen. He says, believe me. The hour has come. That it shall not be here, nor on this mountain, neither at Jerusalem, that you shall come to worship the Father. And he didn't say either where you should worship. He didn't precise give a certain precise location or a mountain where you should go and worship God either. He said it is needed at Jerusalem that you would go to worship the Father. You worship that which you don't know. We we worship. We we worship what we do know. For the salvation is first of, is of the Jews. Yes, as people often say, salvation is of the Jews. Because we know and we know what we say. But Jesus is going to answer her again. The hour has come and has already come where the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For those are the worshipers that the Father desires. God is spirit. And those who want to worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. My beloved, the difference to distinguish the sin that your brother or your sister has committed and is not going to lead them into hell. You, it takes a spiritual man. No, it's not asking for carnal man. Look at the numerous carnal men that there are today. You, you carnal people who are taking the word of God to preach today. I actually, I really don't know what to say to you. 
you need a spiritual man not a carnal man a spiritual man if we make much of a spiritual man know that this person who is spiritual this man who is spiritual this individual that is spiritual he has the Holy Spirit in him if you have the Holy Spirit in you and the Holy Spirit is in you. There is nothing to hide. There is nothing that you can't that to be hit, that is to be hidden from you. If you've kept silent, that's not because you don't know anything. You know everything from A to Z. That's what God wants. That's the true worshiper. And the true worshiper, God needs this. To reunite, to reassemble at one site, not in Jerusalem, not in the mountain of Jerusalem, nor in Israel, but there must need to be a place. If this place isn't revealed, this place where God has revealed it's become God's part. If it's not revealed, the hidden things belong to God. The hidden things belong to God. But the things that are revealed are for us and for our children. I bless God because He has revealed it to me. And that's why I speak. You can fight. You can wage war. You can say yes or no. But it's the truth what I'm telling you. To distinguish. To know. The man, the individual that sinned against the Holy Spirit. And the individual that hasn't sinned against the Holy Spirit. You need a spiritual man. When you're not a spiritual man. You'll be a carcass. On your two feet, you're a carcass, but you think that you're alive. Oh, since a long time ago, you're already in hell, but you're still on this earth. God is spirit. And it must be that those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Look at the church today. Look at the churches today that are waiting for God. They were waiting for the rapture. They're there for miracles. That's the reason they're there. Miracles can originate a, 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 a spiritual life. And just because you work a miracle doesn't make you a spiritual a true worshiper. Contemplate the churches. Behold the churches that have become Jezebel today. You look at the pastors today that are fighting against the truth, they're waging war against the truth, and they're saying, they're saying the women don't have to wear skirts, they can wear pants, it's permitted to wear pants, they don't have to veil their heads before praying. Look at them, just look at them in the churches. The hour has come, and the hour has already come. The hour has come. And it's already come that the true worshippers, when you a woman, you wear pants. When you wear pants to enter into a church, you have no shame. And you believe, you think, you have no strength, and God is powerful. Because you speak in tongues. You think that speaking in tongues makes you a spiritual being. You think that because you evangelize, it makes you a Christian. You think that, you think that because your churches are filled with so-called Christians, numerous people, that makes you a Christian? No! Never. Never. You don't You you woman, you wear pants, but you put your hand upon men, you impose your hand upon men. You can by no means be a Christian, you can by no means be a true worshiper. 
une femme qui met le maquillage, qui met les choses de dire sa pelle, et puis elle croit qu'elle est parmi les vrais adorateurs. Quelle femme de Dieu, quelle femme de Dieu A woman, tu, tu, tu te trompes. A woman pastor, she puts on, she paints her eyelids, she puts on all this fake makeup, and she goes in front of the church. You take yourself for a virtuous woman, you take yourself for a spiritual woman, who are you fooling? Okay, see. There shall by no means any uncleanness enter into the kingdom of heaven. No uncleanness. No uncleanness shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. An impure man can never be a pure worshiper, a true worshiper of God. You wear, you wear fabricated hair. You think that it's, it's not your real hair. Look, it's a great shame that you're wearing. You know perfectly well that it's a great shame. Matthew chapter 10 verse 30 says each and every one of our hairs are numbered. The Bible doesn't say that all our caniculon, that all our fake hair is numbered. No, the, the, the fake, fake artificial stuff. No, it's fake artificial material. It's not natural. And it's not what God created. You're not among the true worshippers. And you know that you can never by any means be a true worshipper, a spiritual man, today or tomorrow. You think that you predict the future to people. You think you have the spirit of prophecy. You take yourself for a prophet. But no, you have the pipes on spirit in you. People have done it more than you. People have surpassed you. You think that you're going to go to heaven. No. <laughs> look at your nails. <laughs> you look like a witch. Look at your nails. You put nails upon your nails. And you think that you're collaborating with God. Just look what you put on your eyes. And you're going to say that you're a true worshiper of God. Hallelujah. Amen. My beloved, it's impossible. It's impossible. You're different. You're different. You're not counted among the children of God. You're not numbered among them. My beloved. It's a truth what I'm telling you. You pastor, you tell your you tell your church members that you can wear fake hair, you can wear caniculon, you can put on your pearls, your makeup, you can put on whatsoever you want, and you think that you're collaborating with God, but you're not you're not collaborating with God. You're collaborating with the devil. You think that you're a spiritual man, but no, you're a carnal being. The true worshippers shall worship God in spirit and in truth. God is a God of spirit. He's the spirit. God is spirit and you must worship him in spirit and in truth. Beloved. Beloved. You look to discern if you can pray for a person 
who has not committed a sin leading against the Holy Spirit, you must have the Holy Spirit in you. But if you're not a person who has the Holy Spirit in you, you can take the tithes of someone who's, pray, who, who's committed a sin against the Holy Spirit. Look, there are many in the churches today. Sorry, me, I can't pray for someone who's committed a sin against the Holy Spirit. I'm sorry, but it's the truth. I can't. It's impossible. It's impossible. Who distinguishes? To distinguish the person who's blasphemed against the Holy Spirit, to not pray for that person, you must have the Holy Spirit. First, when Daniel wants to know the dream of Nebuchadnezzar, he goes before God's face. He has to be united with God. If you're united, if you're united with me, I also will be united with you. If you seek me, you shall find me. If you seek me, you shall find me. If you seek me with all your heart, I shall be found of you. Hallelujah. That's what God loves. That's why Daniel, he's a spiritual man. That's why he went before the presence of God. To see what the problem is exactly. Because all the magicians, all the wise men of that time, they said, it's impossible. No man on this earth can do what the king is requesting. You go into your room and you dream, but you forget the dream. And then you come outside and you want somebody to tell you what you dream. Not only what you dream, but you want somebody to tell you the interpretation of the dream. No, there's nobody on this earth that can do what you, the king has asked. My beloved. That's how, if something is impossible for those people who are deprived of the Holy Spirit, you have the Holy Spirit in you, you can do the impossible. Even, even the devil, even Satan doesn't know the explanation of the dream. The devil doesn't know it. Satan himself doesn't know the explanation of the dream. The, dream. the devil doesn't know it. It's the truth I'm telling you. If the charlatans, if the magicians, if the wise men of that time, if their father, the devil, knew the dream, they would have been able to interpret the dream. But because their father doesn't know the dream, because he's deprived of any interpretation of it, they also don't know. That's why he's weak. He can do nothing. He's small and amount and invaluable even before Daniel. Take good notes. The first thing to distinguish you have to be a man who's a true worshiper. A man who's a true worshiper who worships God in spirit in spirit and in truth. You can distinguish. And it's, you have to have to know Romans chapter 8 verse 14. Romans 8 verse 14. Amen. For all those who are led of the Spirit of God are sons of God. You can be son of God. You can be a daughter of God. Today, the devil, Satan, is laughing. He's mocking at the children of God. Because they're incapable of discerning the person who has sinned against the Holy Spirit and the person who hasn't sinned against the Holy Spirit. And they're quick, they rush to pray for that person and he's laughing, he's mocking. Oh, he's laughing. My beloved, you who's listening to me, if someone were to tell you, if it was addressed to you that you sin against the Holy Spirit, you 
que tu fais 1000 à 7 heures, 2000 à 3000 à, ce n'est rien parce que c'est un péché éternel. Even if you were to take acid to drink, I don't know, whatever toxic, intoxicating drink, whatever the beverage you can take to suicide yourself, you can take what you, you can live on this earth 1,000 years, how many years you can live. It's not going to change anything because it's an eternal sin that you've committed. Because that's why the word says the hour has come and the hour has already come and the hour is already. That's the true worshippers. If you don't want to go to heaven, if you don't want to blaspheme against the Holy Spirit, the people say to will is the power. But if you desire, really, if you will, you want to go to heaven truly. As of today, you have to be a true man, a spiritual man, a true worshiper that worships God in spirit. And you must be led of, by the Holy Spirit, of the Holy Spirit in all your life, in every aspect. Without that, minus that, you can never, you can, you, 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 you sin against the Holy Spirit. Otherwise, you'll boast. You, you, you take yourself for something great. Say, hey, that brother was on the point of death, but I prayed upon him and he's found life again. Oh, see how God used me. I was rich. Oh, look at the men of God. Look at the souls I've saved for God. You, you that's prayed, you that preached for him, all of you, you're under the same condemnation, you're under the same sin. The entire church quit to hell. Yes, it, it, it's, fri it's frightening. Yes, it is pitiful. It is sad. It is sorrowful to see that you take yourself for a great man of God. You saved so many souls. You preached in the name of the Lord. You did so many things in the name of the Lord. And at the last day, you're expecting to reign with the Lord. But he tells you on that day, you've sinned against the Holy Spirit. You can you have no part with me. It comes to a, it arrives at a certain point. It comes to a certain point where God says, even if Moses and Samuel were to intercede for these people before my face, their prayer would say, No one but themselves, I can do nothing for these people, stiff necked people, uncircumcising ears. Who is the Holy Spirit? God says, if you sin everything, you can blaspheme against God himself. He forgives you. If you blaspheme against Jesus, he forgives you. With his disciples, he forgives you. But he made it very clear. He precised it. Made it very clear. Mark chapter 3. Mark 3, 29. Mark 3, 29. Je lis la parole de Dieu au nom puissant de Jésus Christ. Il dit, mais quiconque blasphémera contre le Saint-Esprit n'obtiendra jamais... 28. Il dit, je vous le dis en vérité, tous les péchés seront pardonnés aux fils des hommes et les blasphèmes qu'ils auront proférés. Mais... Quiconque blasphémera contre le Saint-Esprit n'obtiendra jamais de pardon. Il est coupable d'un péché éternel. Alléluia. Alléluia. Amen. Vous écoutez ce que la Bible dit? I think someone has listened to what the Bible just said. Matthieu 12, verset 31, c'est quoi? Matthieu chapitre 12, le verset 31, il dit, Je dis la parole de Dieu au puissant de Jésus-Christ. C'est pourquoi je vous dis, tout péché et tout blasphème sera pardonné aux hommes, mais le blasphème contre l'esprit ne sera point pardonné. Amen. Oui, le, 32 dit. le verset 32, il continue en disant, quiconque parlera, parlera 
contre le Fils de l'homme, il lui sera pardonné. Mais quiconque parlera contre le Saint-Esprit, il ne lui sera pardonné ni dans ce siècle, ni dans le siècle à venir. Praise the Lord, my beloved. It's problems. God, you can blaspheme against God no matter how he says he forgives. The Lord Jesus says any blasphemy that should be preferred against the Son of Man shall be forgiven. But against the Holy Spirit. Unforgivable, unpardonable. It's unpardonable, unremissionable. It's unpardonable. It shall never be forgiven him, nor in this world, nor in the world to come. Who is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit, who is he exactly? The person who the Holy Spirit who is he? So we have to know to, to not sin against that the person, to not sin against him. Listen to me very well. The Holy Spirit, the person of the Holy Spirit, he is still, again, Jesus. Yes, he is still, again, God. Well, why is he saying that any blasphemy against the Holy Spirit shall not be forgiven? But any blasphemy against the Son, any blasphemy against the Apostles, any blasphemy against God the Father shall be forgiven. Listen to me very carefully. I asked the Lord Jesus himself this question. Lord, I want to know who is the Holy Spirit? If someone dares, if someone dares, it's game over for it's over for that person. Who is the what are the words you can say against that person? The Lord Jesus taught me. Instructed me, and it's of that based on that that I want to teach you also. What are the sins against the Holy Spirit? What are those blasphemies against the Holy Spirit? He told me very well. When he spoke, when he was speaking and telling, proclaiming these words, he hasn't yet been placed on the cross. God hasn't yet died. There, up to that point, until at that point, even on the even on the cross, he forgave. But when he resurrected again, that's the problem till today. There's that's the problem till today. There's the problem. In the time of Abraham, when you uttered a blasphemy against God, he forgives you with a sacrifice, an atonement. Because if you consider, if you see Moses told God, repent of the evil that you are going to bring upon these people. If the if the nations, Moses tells God, if the nations were to hear that you destroyed the people in the wilderness, they are going to say it's because he wasn't able to bring them into the promise and that's why he took them out of the land of Egypt and brought them in the wilderness to kill them. What are they going to say? Oh, in regards to the promises, the oath that you swore to your servant Abraham, you swore to your servant Isaac and to their forefathers, what are they going to say? What are you going to say? But when Jesus wasn't on the cross, when he was still on the cross, he forgave their sin. But when he resurrected, that's where the problem came. 
When the Lord Jesus died, he rose up again. He rose up again. And he told his disciples, tarry here first. And they were numbered 120 persons and they tarried there. When the Holy Spirit wasn't yet given to the disciples, but the moment when they began the work, the moment where the Holy Spirit empowered them to begin the work, you dare say one thing, you dare mock at them, you dare laugh at them, you dare do the least gesture. That's where you have problem. You're finished. You're finished. If the Holy Spirit is in a person, listen to me. The, listen, the blasphemies. Someone who's talking to you. The Lord Jesus has told me. When the apostles began to speak in tongues. And the people began to hear and they began to say, Who are these people? We hear them speaking each and every one in our own tongue. <laughs> They didn't know. They weren't serious in what they were saying. They didn't know what they were saying. That's why I began to laugh. They, they, they're full of new wine. Hey, this morning, you just you, you've stuffed yourself with wine. Look at them. Look at them. They're drunk. But when they began to speak a language that they themselves didn't understand, there's a fear that took hold of them. Fear swallowed them up and they began to say, hey, be careful. These people are speaking directly from the on behalf of God. They're speaking in our own language. To, 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 to mock at these people, to make fun of, to scorn them. No, that's not blasphemy. Because they didn't know what they were doing. But, but when they began to speak in their tongues and everyone understood the gospel in his own language, they, they, the, the fear struck them and they began to say, Oh, wh what are we going to do? Men and brothers, what do we do? What do we do? What are we to do? Hallelujah. Amen. Acts chapter 2, verse. Lisons dans le livre des Actes, le chapitre 2, le verset 37 et 38. Je lis la parole de Dieu au nom puissant de Jésus Christ. Après avoir entendu ce, dis ce discours, il eut le cœur vivement touché et il dit à Pierre et aux autres apôtres Hommes, frères, que ferons-nous Pierre leur dit Répentez-vous. Et que chacun de vous soit baptisé au nom de Jésus-Christ pour le pardon de vos péchés et vous recevrez le don du Saint-Esprit. Amen. Amen. Vous verrez. You will see. Quand le Saint-Esprit les a touchés le cœur. When the Holy Spirit sees their hearts. Quand le Saint-Esprit que le Saint-Jésus les a convaincus. When the Lord Jesus, who also is the Holy Spirit, when the Holy Spirit, who also is the Lord Jesus, Quand convicts them. When the Holy Spirit, who is Jesus, persuaded them. And they took hold of themselves and they were touched. And they said, Brothers, brethren, what are we to do? What are we to do? Peter told them. Peter told them, repent, repent, each and every one of you, be baptized, repent, at the beginning you were about to score in the Holy Spirit, repent because you don't want to go farther than what you just did, repent, and every one of you be baptized. Be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus for the remission of your sins, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
And those people, they did not sin against the Holy Spirit. At the beginning, they were on the point, they were on the road to laugh. To scoff at him. But after God touched their hearts, you see Act chapter 5, verse 1 to 10. You see those people who blasphemed against the Holy Spirit, and the death has taken hold of them, death has swallowed them up. Lisons dans le livre des Actes des Apôtres, chapitre 5, à partir du premier verset au verset 10. Je lis la parole de Dieu au nom puissant de Jésus-Christ. Mais un homme nommé Ananias, avec sa fille sa femme, vient, vendit une propriété et retint une partie du prix. Sa femme le sachant, puis il apporta le reste et le déposa aux pieds des apôtres. Pierre lui dit, Ananias, pourquoi Satan a-t-il rempli ton cœur au point que tu mentes au Saint-Esprit et que tu aies retenu une partie du prix du champ S'il n'eût pas été vendu, ne te restera-t-il pas Et après qu'il a été vendu, le prix n'est-il pas à ta disposition Comment as-tu pu mettre en ton cœur un pareil dessein ce n'est pas à des hommes que tu as menti, mais à Dieu. Vous voyez, le Saint-Esprit, c'est à Dieu. You see, the Holy Spirit is God. Le Saint-Esprit, c'est encore Dieu, c'est encore le Seigneur Jésus-Christ. The Holy Spirit is again God, he's again the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Verset 5. Ananias, entendant ces paroles, tomba et expira. Une grande crainte saisit tous les, les auditeurs. Les jeunes gens... C'est enlevé, l'enveloppeur, l'emporteur et l'enseveli. Environ trois heures plus tard, sa femme entra, sans savoir ce qui était arrivé. Pierre lui adressa la parole. Dis-moi, est-ce à un tel prix que vous avez vendu le champ Oui, répondit-elle, c'est à ce prix-là. Alors, Pierre lui dit, comment vous vous êtes accordé pour tenter l'esprit du Seigneur L'Esprit du Seigneur. The Spirit of the Lord. Voici, ceux qui ont enseveli ton mari sont à la porte et ils t'emporteront. Au même instant, elle tomba au pied de la porte et expira. Les jeunes gens étant entrés, la, trouva, la trouvèrent morte et ils l'emportèrent et l'ensevelit auprès de son mari. Amen. L'Esprit du Seigneur. The Spirit of the Lord. Tempter l'Esprit du Seigneur. You tempt the Spirit of the Lord. J'ai posé la question à Jésus. I asked the Lord Jesus the question. Comment c'est une âme? Their souls, at, at the least, their souls, at least. Ananias s'appuiera. Ananias and Sapphira. Dieu peut prier pour lui. Peter can pray for them. Dieu ne peut pas prier pour lui. Peter cannot pray for them because they've already gone too far. Lie to the Holy Spirit. They've gone too far already. Peter cannot pray for them. Now, this is what I'm going to tell you. This is not written in the Bible. This is when I question I asked the Lord Jesus himself the question, and he answered me. He answered me. When Ananias and Sapphira were questioned, is this truly the amount that you were given that was paid for the field? They answered and said, yes, they swore by God and said, yes, truly the Lord is witness. This is the sum. This is the amount that was paid. This is how much we, we sold the field for. They swore by the name of God, saying, this is, this is the amount. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If we look at 2 Corinthians 3, verse 17, you will know that the Lord Jesus is still the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 17. You see here by this verse that the Lord Jesus is also the Holy Spirit. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 17. Je lis la parole de Dieu non. Chapitre 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 le verset 17. Je lis la parole de Dieu non puissant de Jésus-Christ. Or, le Seigneur c'est l'esprit 
Et là où est l'Esprit du Seigneur, là est la liberté. The Lord Jesus is still the Holy Spirit. He's again the Holy Spirit. If you have the Spirit of the Lord in you, you have freedom, you have liberty. My beloved, the Holy Spirit is also the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. When he was not yet dead, you can talk any way you want. You can say whatever. That's what he came for. But when he resurrected, but when he resurrected, he resurrected. He told his disciples, wait. And the Holy Spirit came down. He descended. He came down. That's the problem. Because if you see John chapter 16, John 16, if you take the verse John 16, John chapter 12, the verse, John chapter 16, the verse 12 à 13, je lis la parole de Dieu, non puissant de Jésus Christ. J'ai encore beaucoup de choses à vous dire, mais vous ne pouvez pas les porter maintenant. Quand le consolateur sera venu, L'esprit de vérité, il vous conduira dans toute la vérité, car il ne parlera pas de lui-même, mais il dira tout ce qu'il aura entendu et il vous annoncera les choses à venir. Il vous annoncera les choses à venir. Announce to you things which are to come. Les choses à venir. The things which are to come, things that are to si come. Si tu crois, c'est bon. Si tu ne crois pas, ne fais pas de blasphème. If you believe, good. But if you don't believe, don't blaspheme. Oh, you'll destroy your own soul for a great zero, a great nothing. If the Holy Spirit is in someone and he's speaking to you and you lie to prevent to wage war, to fight, struggle against the Holy Spirit, you have death freely. A death free. That death is free. That sin shall be never forgiven in your life. Never forgiven. Neither in this age. Nor in the age to come. You're finished from eternity to eternity. You're finished. My beloved. I want to tell you a truth. Everything I'm pronouncing to you. And I'm telling you that the Holy Spirit is the author of these words. I'm, I'm telling you. All those people who have risen up, risen up against these words. Against me, they're dead on their feet. Sometimes I contemplate people, but they're, I, I'll leave. But it's finished me just like that. God.